Hello, my name is Kirk Weiler, and this is Common Core Algebra 2 by eMath Instruction. Today, we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson Number 12, on the number e and the natural logarithm. Now, I know you always thought that e was a letter and not a number, but it's also used to represent one of the five most important numbers in all of math, the other numbers being 0, 1, pi, and a number you don't know yet, all right? So, let's take a look at the number e, all right? Now again, I know it's weird because e is a letter, but you also have to get used to the fact that it's used to designate a number. Um, one of the properties of e is that it's like pi, an irrational number. Its decimal expansion goes on forever without any repetition, right, or termination. Its value is approximately 2.72. So just like you should know that pi is about 3.14, you should know that e is a little bit less than 3. Okay, it's good to know that. And finally, the number e is used extensively in exponential modeling, and we're going to see that today and in future lessons. Okay, make sure that you have your calculator handy for today because we'll certainly be using it later on. All right, so let's start off with something easy. <clears throat> Since E is used a lot in exponential modeling, let's ask ourselves, what would it look like if we were to graph the function y equals e to the x? It says explain your choice and then check on your calculator. All right, so what, what do you think? What should we, um, which one's gonna be right? Pause the video and think about this for a moment. Well, I certainly hope that you didn't pick 1, which is a parabola, or 4, which is more of a complicated polynomial graph. It has to be 2 or 3. So the question is, is y equals e to the x an increasing exponential, right? Or is it a decreasing exponential? Which, which one of them is it? Well, e has a value that's about 2.7. And because of that, it's greater than 1. And what we know is that if we graph any exponential function of the form y equals b to the x, where the base is greater than 1, it must be an increasing exponential. Therefore, it must be choice 2. All right? We'll break out the calculator eventually and take a look at e. For right now, I think we're going we're gonna to leave it, leave it out. But I would encourage you to put that into your calculator and take a look at the graph of y equals e to the x. Pause the video now, write down anything you need to. Okay, clear out the text. Let's keep going. All right, exercise number two. Now we're gonna get into some exponential modeling. A population of llamas on a tropical island can be modeled using the equation P equals 500 times E, kind of tiny up here, raised to the 0.035t, where t represents the number of years since the llama, llamas were first introduced to the island. Letter A, how many llamas were in, initially introduced at t equals zero? Show the calculation that leads to your answer. You should not need your calculator to do this, so take a shot at this. All right, well, I'm kind of hoping that none of you actually needed that none of you actually needed um, your calculator to do this or even needed to evaluate it. Hopefully what you know is that whenever you have an exponential function, right, then this is what you're starting at. But let's actually show that. Okay, 0 0.035 times 0, <clears throat> which would of course be 0 0.035 times 5 times 0 would be 0 e to the 0, like all numbers to the 0, would be 1. So 500 times 1 is simply 500. All right, and simple enough. OK, letter B asks us to algebraically determine the number of years for the population to reach 600. Round your answer to the nearest, yeah, to the nearest tenth of a year. All right. So in other words, we're trying to determine a solution to this equation. 500 times e to the 0.035t is equal to 600. 
All right. Since this is an exponential equation and we're asked to solve it algebraically, from the last lesson, what we can use is we can use logarithms. All right. Now, think about it. We're solving for t. Let's talk about what's happened to t. We've multiplied it by 0.035, we've exponentiated, and we've multiplied by 500. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the 500. Now, many times this fraction doesn't work out to be nice at all. In this case, 600 divided by 500 is actually quite a nice number. It's 1.2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the 1.2 because it's just going to be easier to write. Now, I think I'll use that common log base 10, and I'll get log of e to the 0 0.035t equals the log of 1.2. And that's going to allow me now to bring this out, 0.035t times the log of e equals the log of 1.2. All right. And finally, t, well, gosh, t is being multiplied by 0.035 and multiplied by the log of e. So we can divide by both of those, and we can either sort of divide them in pieces, so we could get rid of the log of e, and then divide it all by 0.035, or we could do the other way around. We could have 0.035 divided first, and then the log of e. doesn't really matter. All right. Let me take a moment now to bring out the TI-84+. plus, <clears throat> Because I'd like to show you how I'm going to enter that. And I'd also like to show you a few different places on the calculator where E shows up. All right. For instance, along the left-hand corner, you'll see this button right here that has a little LN on it. I'm going to introduce you to that in just a moment. But above it, notice that we have this E right, right raised to the X. Um, that is specifically there because so, so many times we want to raise E to some power. Now, in this particular problem, we just want the number e, and thankfully, that also occurs on our calculator. It occurs right here, right above the division button, right, is that letter e. So that's actually where we're going to, um, or the number e, sorry, not the letter e, the number e, that's where we're going to get all of this. Now, watch, watch as I type it in. I'm going to do log of 1.2 divided by log, now I'm just going to go grab that e, e, parentheses, now I could hit enter now. Let me do that. Enter. Now that's not my final answer. I still have to divide by 0 0.035. So let me do that now. Divide it by 0 0.035 equals, and there I have my final answer. 5. Point, uh, let's see, the nearest tenth, 5.2. Okay. And that's it. So, we're going to use E a lot, lot more. Don't worry about it. All you need to know about E right now is that it's a number that's just slightly less than 3, and it gets used a lot in exponential modeling. I'm going to put away the TI-84 plus right now. Bye-bye, calculator. And I'm also going to clear out the text in a moment, so pause the video if you need to. Okay. Let's move on to exercise three. Ah, I guess we can't. First, we have to introduce the natural logarithm. All right, so the natural logarithm is the inverse of y equals e to the x. The reason that it's called the natural logarithm is because e is sometimes called the natural base. Um, exponential models and e to the x come up a lot in nature, strangely enough, especially when describing the rate at which a population grows, which is what we saw in the last problem. All right, so the inverse of y equals e to the x is the natural logarithm because it's so important, it actually gets a special symbol. You know, they don't use the word log, they use the word ln. And literally, this comes from the French word logarithm naturel, logarithm naturel. Now, that can be confusing to students because they just see an ln and an n. So don't forget that the ln of x is also just the log base e of x. I mean, that's 
right? That's just what the inverse of an exponential is. Anytime we have y equals b to the x, its inverse is log base b of x. So if we have y equals e to the x, and its inverse is ln of x, well then that's got to be log base e of x. And we'll, we'll show that repeatedly in the next exercise, so you'll get some, you'll get the hang of it. All right, I'm going to clear this text out, and then we'll move on to the next exercise. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> Without the use of your calculator, because the natural logarithms on your calculator, we just saw it, there was that little ln button. Without the use of our calculator, determine the values of each of the following. Well, what's the ln of e? Well, remember, the ln is the same as the log base e. So what would we have to raise e to to get e? Well, we'd have to raise it to the first power. So the ln of e is 1. How about this one, the ln of 1? Well, again, that's the same as the log base e of 1. And again, that answers this question. What do I have to raise e to to get 1? Ah, that would have to be the 0, right? e to the 0 would be 1. But then they start to get actually quite easy. Right here, I'm looking for log base e of e to the fifth. Well, that would just be 5, right? These two cancel, but also, just what do I raise e to to get e to the fifth? Eh, it's 5. And finally, the log base e of the square root of e. Think about what that would be for a minute. Well, it would be 1 half. And the reason is that the square root of e is the same as e to the 1 half. And what do I have to raise e to to get e to the 1 half? Well, 1 half. So without a calculator, really the only thing that we can do with the natural logarithm is evaluate um, exponential expressions where the base is e. All right. Anyway, pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, get rid of it. Excellent. Let's move on. Now, the natural logarithm is no different than any of the other logarithms. The log laws still apply. Remember those from a couple lessons ago, the logarithm laws? So let's see if we can simplify the natural logarithm of x cubed divided by e squared by using those log laws. Pause the video now and even take out those notes if you need to and try to simplify this problem and then we'll, we'll loop back to it. All right, let's go through it. Well, the big structure inside of the logarithm is a quotient. And remember, we have this property, let me use p and q, that if I had the log base b of p divided by q, that would be the log base b of p, minus the log of q. Therefore, this thing will be the natural log of x cubed minus the natural log of e squared. Okay, but we also had that property that we had not that long ago that said, in fact, we saw it in the last, last lesson repeatedly, was that we could bring these exponents out. So that would be 3 times the natural log of x minus and what would this be? That's the log base e of e squared. Ah, that would just be 2. So 3 ln of x minus 2. And there it is. So logarithm laws apply to the natural log just as they do to any other logarithm. Pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay. Let's get rid of it. Exercise number five, our final exercise. Bit more of a modeling problem here. A hot liquid is cooling in a room whose temperature is constant. We're going to work a lot more with this in a few more lessons. Its temperature can be modeled using the exponential function shown below. The temperature T in degrees, is in degrees Fahrenheit and is a function of the number of minutes M it has been cooling. So there it is. There's my temperature function. Letter A says, what was the initial temperature of the water at m equals 0? Do without using your calculator. So go ahead and try to figure this out. All right. Now, I always worry that people will either tell me 101, 
or they'll tell me 67, neither, of one, neither one of which is correct. In fact, we can see the correct temperature by just sticking in 0 for m. So let's do it. 101 times e to the negative 0 0.03 times 0 plus 67. Now you just have to be true to the math. Negative 0 0.03 times 0 is 0. So we'll get that. Then e to the 0 is 1. But then that will be 101 plus 67. So the liquid started at a temperature of 168. Simple enough. Now, take a look at B. How do you interpret the statement T of 60 equals 83.7? Write something down for that. What is your interpretation? All right, this is important. One of the things that Common Core Algebra expects of us is to be able to interpret statements in function notation. And what this really tells us is the liquid is at a temperature of 83.7 degrees Fahrenheit after 60 minutes of cooling. The output to the function is the temperature, the input is the number of minutes it's been cooling. All right, letter C. Using the natural logarithm, we have to use the natural logarithm, determine algebraically when the temperature of the liquid will reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's going to be less than 60 minutes, but show the steps in your solution. Round to the nearest tenth of a minute. All right, let's do it. I might have to write a little bit small here. You may as well. Not a lot of room for this one, but we're going to do it. So we're going to try to solve this equation. All right, now it may look daunting at first, but again, you just have to reverse what's happened to M. Let's take a look. m has been multiplied by negative 0.03, exponentiated, multiplied by 101, and then 67 has been added. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that 67. Right? That's going to leave me with 101e e to the negative 0.03m is equal to 33. All right? Now I'm going to get rid of the 101 by dividing by it on both sides. And that's going to leave me with e to the negative 0.03m equals 33 divided by 101. Now, normally at this point, since I'm solving an exponential equation, I could, I could really use any logarithm I want. But we're going to use the natural logarithm for one very specific reason. And that isn't because they told me in the problem, although that would certainly be a good enough reason. We're going to use it for that reason because the natural logarithm and e cancel. They're inverses, right? What do I have to raise e to to get e to the negative 0.03m? Well, negative 0.03m. Right, it's great because all logarithms then go away except for the one on this side. And now, of course, I can divide both sides by negative 0.03, cancels that, and this is about 37.3 minutes, which is good because it's less than the 60 minutes that it took for it to reach 83.7. Granted, I used up most of my space for letter D, but what are you going to do? The computer screen is only so big. I can't write all that small. Let's take a look at D. On average, how many degrees are lost per minute over the interval 10 is less than or equal to m is less than or equal to 30, round to the nearest tenth of a degree? Now, Take a look. I'm trying to figure out the number of degrees per minute. That's a rate of change. It's essentially an average rate of change. So what I really need to do is know what is the temperature at 10 minutes. And that's an issue of putting it into my calculator. I need to know the temperature at 30 minutes. So what I'd like you to do is try to use your calculator to evaluate both of those two temperatures. What you could do is you could put this into y1, right, as if you were going to graph it, and then use a table to come up with those two temperatures. 
but be careful as you put it into your calculator, okay? All right. Well, at 10 minutes, we're at a temperature of 141.8 degrees Fahrenheit. At 30 minutes, we're at 108.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Now again, I'd like to pause for a minute. If you didn't get those two values, I'd go back, try again in terms of evaluating. But now that you've got those two values, see if you can figure out how many degrees per minute were lost over that interval. Okay, well this is simple enough. I'm just going to subtract these two, right? And when I subtract those two, what I find is that the temperature went down by 33.7 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's the temperature that went down. But I want that per minute. So I'm going to take 33.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to divide it by how many minutes have passed. Well, that's 20 minutes. And that's going to leave me with units of degrees Fahrenheit per minute, which is exactly what I want. And if I do that, what I find is that I'm losing 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Doesn't sound like very much, but eventually that builds up and the liquid cools down. All right, we're going to deal a lot more with the modeling of cooling liquids in a couple more lessons. But pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, I'm going to clear out the text and then we'll wrap up the lesson. All right, so today we, we introduced a brand new number, the number E. And again, I know it's irritating. Um, this guy named Leonard Euler, um, whose last name begins with E, really kind of did the formative work with the number E, and he, well, he named it after himself, you know, which is kind of his choice if he's doing the most important work with it. Um, but we've got this number E, a little bit, little bit less than three, that get used a lot in exponential models and modeling. And because of that, it gives rise to the log base E of X, which is also known as the natural logarithm. All right, more with these two in future lessons. For now, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.